But the best thing happens here. Yes. <laughs> the best thing happens. She's in the middle of being like, do you want salt or pepper? Chad somehow dives into the shot. And is like, <laughs> I'll eat the clump. Grabs it. Yeah. Well, literally, the mom is like, Chad. And he's like, fuck off, Debbie. I said dibs. <laughs> how, 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 how. Is anybody eating this decorative pumpkin? <laughs> wow. Too slow. Too slow. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema because I chose the wrong grail. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath Enright. Heath, welcome back. Let's just get right into it. I'm so excited. Yeah, no, I'll go quick. I'll go quick on the intro. Eli's here too. Okay, cool. <laughs> now, here. Yes, me. <laughs> and sitting in 900 miles, one of my orthoses is my bad friend Eli Boston. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Oh, I'm talking about the vampire movie! So tell us, Heath, <laughs> what will we, we be breaking down today? We watched the last today? vampire on Earth. It's a very positive take on vampires mm -hmm. written by Jehovah's Witnesses. And I guess that makes sense, considering both groups have a whole bunch of trouble getting invited in the front door. So that, yeah, that <laughs> common, it's, it's positive. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you loved Twilight, but the Mormon subtext wasn't quite bad shit enough for you, you will love this movie. Oh, it's as close to the cinematic adaptation of My Immortal as we're ever going to get. Yeah, it really is. It truly, deeply and abidingly is. Oh, and one of our listeners sent me a link to a guy on IMDb. The, the only factual error listed in this movie is a really upset Jehovah's Witness that wanted to point out how much <laughs> Jehovah's Witness shit they got wrong in this fucking movie. That is not... <laughs> How the Jehovah's Witnesses. Yeah, no, it's not a pastor. It's an elder. Idiots. Right. <laughs> right. It's not a church. It's temple. They wouldn't have a cross. Everything you said about AIDS and cancer is definitely accurate, though. Yeah. But <laughs> that's all good. Yeah, that's, that's right. what you know that. Yes. AIDS is a blood disease. Medically, the vampire movie was perfect. Yes. No, exactly. <laughs> all right. So is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? Yeah, I would. Best worst speaking ability by actors. Okay. Yeah. It's rough it's like the whole script i don't know if this exists but what's like the reverse of italics if <laughs> if the whole script was in opposite of italics that's what they're talking in de-emphasize every word uh yeah i think noah the, the character noah takes the crown on there but everyone is competing for it maybe chad yeah chad's pretty good okay we need the opposite of italics where you just completely deadpan every word that's in that font <laughs> Ooh, yes so I was going to go with best worst drivel. Okay. The dialogue in this movie is not the worst drivel that we've ever had to sit through. And it is not the best drivel we've ever gotten to sit through, but it is the best worst. Yeah. Okay? Collectively, we have transcribed more what the fuck lines from this movie than we have from all the other movies we've ever done combined. <laughs> yeah, our notes for this episode are the script yes, of this right. movie. <laughs> Annotated, but yes. yes. <laughs> And I'm going to take the easy one. I'm going to take the easy one. The easy, easiest, easy one that ever done easy. Best worst conversation about AIDS. Oh, God. That's all I'm going to say for now. Yeah. So that's an aspect of the movie that we didn't mention yet. But yep. yeah, it's vampires and AIDS. Who if, at every moment during this review, I want you to try to think to yourself, when are they going to have a conversation about who does and does not deserve AIDS? Because it's coming. It is coming. It's part of this movie. The answer is not what you're thinking either. Yeah, no, it's... it's. All right, so it's, I, I, well, I'm looking forward to this review the way that people look forward to the birth of their children. So we're going to keep the break brief, but when we come back, we'll dive into all the monotone teenage love notes that are the last vampire on Earth. What What... What work does on Earth do in that title? The Last Vampire. I'm giddy. I'm, do you remember when that lawyer had to tell Alex Jones that he had a copy of his phone and he kind of fumbled mm -hmm. because he was so... That's yeah. what I am right now. I'm like... <laughs> so, anyways, do you remember... <laughs> <laughs> so I stir the eggs? Yes, and then add them to the pan right after that. Hey, guys, what you doing? Oh, hey, Noah. He's just teaching me how to cook. Yeah, it's a real pain, let me tell you. Well, Eli, if you want to learn how to cook, why don't you just try HelloFresh? 
What's HelloFresh? With HelloFresh, you get farm fresh, pre portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. Wow, that does sound good. But how's it going to teach Eli how to cook? With step-by-step recipes, HelloFresh makes cooking a breeze. That's why I know Illusions recommended as a product. In fact, I'd put my social security number to the test, which is as followed. Uh, Nine, sorry, Noah? 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 But, dude, what? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do the HelloFresh ad. Does the ad require that you recite your actual social security number? No, it does. Actually, it's kind of a, it's part of the personal endorsement thing. They say we're not doing enough of a personal endorsement. So. Right. Okay. Okay. Anyway, I love HelloFresh so much that I'll come to your house and make it with you. I would die for HelloFresh. HelloFresh is everything. My heart, my soul, the beginning, the end. Where HelloFresh ends, I start. And when the earth turns to dust, only HelloFresh will remain. Okay, this can't possibly be the copy. No, no, the the dust, only HelloFresh will remain. It's on there. HelloFresh. I know illusions. Love you more than my wife. All right, go. Call this meeting of the Dark Brother and Sisterhood of the Shadows to order. First up, uh, I want to introduce our newest Dark Brother, Sheltheon, Dark Prince of the Legion Force. Uh, that's that's not my name, dude. It's your it's your vampire name. Oh, got it. Yeah, yeah. sorry. Cool. Anyway, so uh, Michaelius, what hast thou to report? Bad news, liege lord Gormacon. Crestillion remains under lock and key, so Dark Ritual will have to wait until he's free. What? He means Chris is still grounded, so we can't hang out in his basement. Oh, right. Got it. Sorry. Uh, no, don't, don't hiss now. I can hiss now, Michael. I got it just then. It's so Michaelius. Michaelius, thank you. Yeah. So, uh, one last thing. We've been called on to enshrine the dark origins of our art. We have a scribe and a manual, and soon the world shall hear our siren call. Ah. Sandra's mom says we can use her camera to make her move. Nice! (laughs) Why why does she have the best camera anyway? Only fans. Nice. Dude. I mean, nice. Better. And we're back for the breakdown. And as if to justify my best worst right out of the gate, we're going to open up on a little monologue that actually begins with this opening sentence. These are the first spoken words in the movie. Quote, there are all kinds of people and creatures in this world. (laughs) (laughs) Yep. And the writing, can I say it, goes down from there. If you can believe that, yeah. Also, the music, my God, my first note is, Music note, either open the music box or close it, dude. Yes. Jesus. <laughs> My music note was, yes, I can believe you wrote this yourself. <laughs> <laughs> so she, she goes on with her little opening monologue, which basically boils down to, what if the premise of this movie was true, y'all, and there were vampires? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. At one point, does she say, maybe we should hear vampires side of the story? Yes. Yep. That she does. She also implies that the vampire hunters are just jealous. Again, interesting take. Interesting take. So, okay. So then we get, she wraps up her monologue. We get our blood cells credits. (laughs) The music, it turns out this shitty music box music has lyrics. The guy starts off going like, I'm ready. And I'm like, I'm not, I'm not ready for the lyrics. (laughs) Yeah. My music note here was teenage Eli is staring out the car window, feeling bad for himself while his mom drives him home from high school. (laughs) From Ben Folds' funeral where he played for himself at his own yes. funeral and he was <laughs> looking at a rain drippy window. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Also, the blood cells, it was supposed to be like scary because it's a vampire movie, but they look like Mickey Mouse the they way do. they did the animation. Yep. So it was just yep. like, oh, cute. Cool. It's also, it's not blood cells. It's like blood cells over the credits, over some other scenes. I, Which I are my over notes. other scenes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote my notes. It's too many filters, Captain. The screen can't handle it. <laughs> I wrote in my notes. It's like these credits have a real two editors are fighting the feel to them. <laughs> <laughs> like to the death over an old yeah. style editing bay. Oh, God. and, and, and. The credits, by the way, eventually, so we're watching, 
it's hard to discern, but we're watching a bunch of shots from a college campus. And at one point we scroll by like a bunch of people playing guitar together. <laughs> we can hear them, <laughs> but the music that's playing is still playing. It's the, the most discordant and jarring <laughs> shit you can imagine. Okay, let me throw this out there for those who watch along, because I know we have some listeners who do, some, even some listeners who do viewing parties. First of all, this is the perfect movie to do that with. Oh, yeah. Second of all, you can play a game, spot the guitar throughout this movie. There will be a guitar in almost every scene, <laughs> just like waving through the background. Also, you got to admit, it's kind of funny that Ben Folds is playing piano at his own funeral, and then it's like, no, 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 G, G minor, G minor, and then you good finger. Squin, no, 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 no. Yes, right, right. So bad. Ah, uh, and then the, so we get the movie's opening scene. This is so fucking weird because we we have these two party animal kids going like, oh, it's gonna be a big party tonight, and then a girl walks by who's just not cool, and they're like, oh, I wouldn't want to have sex with her, and then we never see any of those characters or go to that party ever again. Nope. This mm -mm. <laughs> this scene is just. I guess this is their her establishing shot for high school or whatever. This yep. is supposed to be a college. It's but supposed to be college, but it's middle. The, it's middle school talking. Yes, they're all talking like whoever wrote this movie went to middle school, did not go to college, or did not do anything at college. Doesn't know any words that would nope. fit into conversations at a college. <laughs> they know major and they get some they yeah. get some use out of that one, but that's it. Their idea of a dorm room alone is <laughs> deeply fascinating. <laughs> deeply fascinating. So yeah, so so we watch them for a while. We see mysterious vampire guy walk by and they're like, "Wow, he's so pale. It's like he's a vampire." And then we cut over to two girls. This is Chloe and Mel, roommates at this college, and they're like, "Wow, look at that vampire guy. He's so pale. He might be a vampire." Right. Yep. We just get that back to back. Those two. <laughs> <laughs> also, just a little note here. At one point, the one girl, they're doing the like small talk at the beginning of the scene. And she says she had a massive test in chemistry. <laughs> <laughs> First time I've heard a test described by its size. Yeah. <laughs> so. So, yeah. So the vampire guy walks by and there's this weird little musical little, little, little thing that happens. And the girl turns to the other girl and goes, that was weird. And we're like, did she hear the. The sound effect or what what is she <laughs> what is she responding to? This was a weird way to start the movie, I guess. Are we in middle school or college? I right. don't know. It's yes. very <laughs> so weird. So okay, now we're gonna cut to the strangest English literature class in all of time. This is the best. <laughs> <laughs> so the professor's gonna tell it, they're gonna read Dracula. And so he starts his little lecture on Dracula, and they don't know anything about Dracula. Clearly, nobody involved with this movie ever read Dracula. So he's given this, like, the Oxford English Dictionary defines Dracula as little... <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> the entire amount that they know is the word Dracula. Yes! So we watch them vamp that one piece of knowledge, basically, and he writes Dracula really slowly on oh, the blackboard God. at the front. Not everyone was intended to use a whiteboard, my friends. <laughs> he's the, you can see, he's, he writes the D and he's like, well, that's fucking ridiculously huge. I've made, a, I've made a terrible mistake. I'm gonna need a 26 foot Ray Feynman level board <laughs> to get the rest of Dracula. So then he starts writing small and he's like, too small. Fuck. Yes. All right. <laughs> so it looks like a birthday card made by a troubled 10 year old. <laughs> Fuck, now I'm doing set theory like I'm Will hunting this. No, none of this. This isn't working. But the music tries to make it like he is doing math. It's yeah. so stupid. Right. So he's like, okay, so we're going to read Dragula. And to make the novel more interactive, we're going to do something unconventional. And I'm like, if he just starts sucking the blood out of one of his students, this is a solid opening. Yeah. I, I wrote down, you're going to watch me and my wife fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he says, and, and, but he goes, we're actually going to do Dracula as a play in costumes and everything. And they're like, this is a. It's a fucking English literature class. What the fuck are you talking about, man? Places. I said we're going to do a play. <laughs> Action. What? <laughs> and also, by the way, just quick side note here. If you've ever read Dracula, you know, 
the novel is presented as a series of like diary entries and letters and news articles and shit like that. Are they going to act out writing in a diary and reading the news? <laughs> that would have been better than what they do. <laughs> yep. All right. Fair. He's like, all right, so I'm going to assign roles. Uh, pale vampire guy, you get to this be Dracula. Is, this is the best. He's like, all right, so who wants to be Dracula? Nobody? Really? Nobody? All right. Well, fine. Just at random then from the class list. Uh, let's see. Random pick. Uh, Aurelius the Pale, House of Pallor. You'll be Dracula. <laughs> <laughs> the character's name is literally Aurelius. Yeah, yeah. I didn't make that up. That's nope. real. The <laughs> only thing that would have been funnier is if he'd been like, cool, so I'll just randomly pick names. Uh, me, I'm Dracula. Uh, <laughs> I thought he was going to pick himself. I honestly thought he was going to do that. No, he would be Jonathan. Yeah, obviously. But yes, this the character's name of the main vampire is Aurelius. And in response, I wrote in my notes, hey, guys, this is Anna. Eli had a severe bullying seizure. He's been taken <laughs> to the hospital where he'll be on a steady drip of making fun of people till he can return to the podcast. Oh, it's so good. He looks like Ed Norton got fucked by gaw, the word, the noise. <laughs> yes. Yes. He looks like vanilla ice cream cone that hates its dad. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then we cut, so that, that ends, he gives a few more assignments. He's like, and also all the other named characters, you'll play the other major roles. Also, the rest of you motherfuckers will be in it too. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. Who's in the cold open? You're the yeah. other character. <laughs> right. <laughs> Fucking Dracula. <laughs> so, and one of these characters is named Noah. He's going to be playing the main character and he's super bummed over the class. So we, we have this little scene where they're all like, bitching about having to do a play in, in English literature class, which it opens on this actor struggle to deliver a line about how he won't be able to deliver lines. That was pretty fucking meta. Yeah. Noah, in, in a fierce competition, Noah delivers the lines that he is given in this movie the most like a hostage in an Al-Qaeda video. Yes. Right. <laughs> he has the most Stockholm syndrome. Right. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. But his girlfriend is super duper into this, right? Oh, how did how does she tell us that, Noah? What does she say <laughs> to indicate that to us? Well, I feel like this was supposed to be humor, but her delivery made that literally impossible. She's like, who knew that lit class would bring all of my fantasies to fruition? Okay, Noah, calm down. Will you calm down? <laughs> Will you fucking relax and read the anti-italics that are in the script? You're right. No, I was it's ignoring like, It's like them. the whole script had that thing, plus it's all in parentheses somehow, and there's no spaces or punctuation. Oh, God. Her, her line is, I've always wanted to play a sultry female vampire who knew that lip class would bring all my fantasies to fruition. Oh, okay. Yes. If moving your lips while you read could be an acting style, this girl has mastered it. <laughs> All right, so then we get Chloe and Mel. They're meeting after class, also having this same conversation, right? Because we have to have it twice. And th there's also a, a weird admission here, right? So Mel goes like, wow, that's so weird. That sounds like something that would happen in a drama class, not an English lit class. And I'm like, okay, so this movie does know that that's the thing <laughs> they could have used. Yeah, that's that sounds exactly more like drama <laughs> than, than lit class. And James Lipton is your insane professor who's going to fuck his wife on stage and make you watch very clearly. Yeah. I did enjoy right at the beginning of this stupid little scene, though. The music was like it did new sitcom scene music for yep. a second. Yep. Whoever, yes. whoever was in this pit or music group, they were like, -a -bum -bum -a. nope. Oh, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yes. oh, sorry. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Vampire. Boom. Scrambled eggs. <laughs> All right, so then we, we cut to, it's school's over, and Aurelius is walking home when he happens upon a blood mobile, or as vampires call it, a taco truck. Yeah, he says to the driver, I have a proposition for you. And I wrote in my notes, he's definitely going to be disappointed when nobody's getting their dick sucked in this proposition. <laughs> yes, but he would like to buy some blood from the blood mobile. How much blood, Noah? How much blood would Aurelius the vampire like to buy? Oh, you know, I don't know, five gallons? What? Gallons? They gallons. have gallons. gallons. Like, they measure in gallons there? They take my pints. So. <laughs> yeah. I guess you could add it <laughs> up. They have to mix them at the end of the day. 
<laughs> yeah, <laughs> pouring them into one big jar. This this one's all kinds. You figure it out. I don't know. <laughs> Spin the wheel of types. This is all oops, all a positive. So save that towards the back of the truck. Yeah, to be clear, that that would be about forty standard blood donations. But he's like, yeah, I want five gallons of human blood delivered to my house. I'll pay handsomely for it. And the guy's like, great. I have no follow up questions. We'll just do that then. Nope. He gives him a down payment for the five gallons of blood, too. Yes. Mm -hmm. And that happened. We watched that happen. It's just all of a sudden a wad of cash flies in from a crazy angle from a different time of day. And then we're back to those guys. Yes. Like the cash was a pet bat he had summoned. (laughs) Come, George Washington. (laughs) No, somebody's dad was like, you can have one small wad of cash. You get 10 seconds and then I take it right back inside. (laughs) Yep, exactly. So, okay, now it's the next day. They're at school, and it's time for them to start reading their parts in Dracula. (laughs) Oh, my God. (laughs) And we just we just watched terrible high school reading. Yep. This is a memory. This is a trauma I had not uncovered until these actors started to speak. (laughs) Hello, welcome freely and come freely with freeness to my house where I welcome you freely. Yeah, it's bad. Like they're bad at reading cold from the book. Okay. It's identical to their acting of their right, lines yes. from a script that they should have been like, you know, off book on by now. Right. That's the thing is that I don't know if they're going for bad line reading or not. There's no way that we could tell. Right. You need double reverse, triple italic. Yeah. Uh, right. right. Levels. They would have to do good acting in this scene to differentiate themselves. <laughs> right. right. So. All right, so we get a few minutes of that. Don't worry, there will be more. Okay, that would have been amazing if they just did good acting. <laughs> that would have made the whole movie good. If they yes. did like one minute right here of good acting and never acknowledged it. For the rest <laughs> never <movie>. again. Right. <laughs> well, yeah, and then the professor could come in afterwards and go, eh, it's all right, you'll get it. You'll get it. That actually. was terrible. So. <laughs> that was terrible. Try to talk more like this. Like a help, man. <laughs> So, okay, so now we're at the library. Aurelius is, I, I call him Ori in my notes because I wasn't going to spell that out every fucking time. So Ori is hanging out brooding and Chloe comes in. And she's like, hey, I feel like we're love interests in this movie, I think. And he's like, yeah, probably, whatever. Yeah. Go. Let's rehearse lines, penis vagina. What? Yeah. yeah, do you want to rehearse? And by rehearse, I mean make out and listen to My Chemical Romance. Yeah, and he's like, sure, I guess. He gives her his phone and he's like, put your number in my phone. I'll text you my availability. And I wanted so badly for her to be like, hey, why is your home screen a big glass of blood? Is this a pint glass? (laughs) No, this is not. Oh, does this count as like inviting the vampire in some sense? Oh, I don't know. You put your number in their phone. Now are you (laughs) like partially inviting them into your like. Certainly into your DMs. Telephone life. (laughs) Yes. Yeah, and by the way, we should point out, like, at no point in this movie will the music ever line up with what's going on. Never. Right? At this point, we have cartoon squirrels creeping up behind them music. Yeah. Right? I wrote down, Jaws is not enjoying his brother's wedding. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, um... <laughs> so then we, we, we cut to Chloe at the doctor. She's getting a blood test. What's wrong with Chloe? Will, ne- will we ever know? Hey, uh, fellas, for the movie... Do you mind if my aunt with terrible Parkinson's plays <laughs> the blood drawing nurse? <laughs> Does anyone want to say anything that would be <laughs> would an objection like to, to that? Because <laughs> she's always dreamed of playing a nurse. Because <laughs> so, otherwise we're just going to point a camera at her hands that I want to emphasize cannot stop shaking and say that she's just drawn blood from a patient. <laughs> All yes. right, no objection. Are we going to actually have her draw blood to make it real? No. <laughs> No, she can't do that. She has terrible parts. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, dude, come on. So, yeah, so we get that quick scene, just that tease, and then we get Ori and Chloe go into the coffee shop for a muffin and a coffee, right? And this is the getting to know you, what's your major scene. <laughs> and as far as we know, it's a high school at this moment, so it's insane. But we learn that it, her major is cultural anthropology and his is hematology yes which you'd, you'd major in biology maybe yep. in undergrad that, that we don't right. have a hematology department really strong hematology department at community college wherever this absolutely is. not well and and then on top of that he goes you know because i want to cure blood diseases like aids and diabetes Ooh, oh for two yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, you, are you, I feel like they'd cover that in hematology 101. I would, I would pay anything to be able to explain to the author of this movie that those aren't blood diseases. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? They're in the blood. No, well, all the diseases are in the blood. <laughs> what? <laughs> So you're like really sick? You know what? Never mind. Never mind, man. <laughs> all right. So yeah. So they clear up that all of that, and he's like, "So, what other bullet points are in your character bio?" And she's like, "Well, I want to be a missionary, and my dad's a pastor, so this totally counts for Gam." Christian movie. Yep. Well, she even invites him to go to church. She's like, "Do you want to go to church with me?" And he's like, "Sure. Why not?" And I'm like, "Is that a real question? Because I have real answers." <laughs> Really wanted him to burst into flames the second he walks in the door. Credits. <laughs> oh, there you go. And he's like, all right, well, I'm... Le so we, we didn't mention... So she goes up and she's like, I want a mu muffin and a coffee. And he's like, I don't want anything because I'm not a vampire. That's for sure. It's a different reason. <laughs> I like solid food, just not now. <laughs> I'm not... I don't want it now. Right, yeah. Normally I would. <laughs> I'll fuck solid food right later. <laughs> <laughs> I am. So yeah, so so they sit down. She starts to eat her muffin, and he's like, "Well, I'm leaving." And she's like, "Oh, is the scene over?" He's like, "Yep, bye." It, it's actually worse than that. He goes, "I should go." Are you coming with me? Yo, we're right. <laughs> and she's like, "No, we just fucking sat down. I'm eating my muffin. What are you talking about?" <laughs> so, and so he just leaves. He doesn't sink back down and go like, "Oh yes, of course." He's just like, "Okay, well then." Goodbye. Enjoy your muffin alone. <laughs> so, well, okay. So in my head, Cannon, he he found out that she was Christian, and he's like, "Well, I gotta go anyway." Yeah, sure. Call me about the church thing or whatever. I'll still have that number later today. <laughs> <laughs> Weren't they supposed to run lines? Wasn't that the whole point? No, of the yeah, scene? that was uh, the point of the meeting. Yeah. To be fair, they did run lines for the movie. But <laughs> they 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 got some noises out with some spaces. Actually, right. so they got better. They did yeah. get better. There you go. So, okay, so then we cut immediately to Sunday morning at church, right? He's going to go to church with her. We're going to open this scene on conservatively 90 fucking seconds of a mediocre singer singing badly into an echoey church. You know how white people church sucks because it's just white people like mumble humming a hymn? Well, it turns out the Jehovah's Witnesses have found something worse than that, which is just one white guy mumbling a hymn. Yeah, it's like unaccompanied. It's, it's like acapella karaoke. Yeah. yeah. Of a hymn. Right. right. Oh. <laughs> Well, and then the fucking podcast editor on me was going nuts because I'm like, oh, you can just set the microphone any damn where you want in the church, I guess, huh? <laughs> Seriously, it was like there was a skit that started with like, Heath, you sing for a little bit and then we'll start. And you guys never started. <laughs> yep. Yep. <laughs> the only way this scene could have made sense is if he finished his song and then someone had said, OK, thank you so much. We'll be posting audition results next yes. week. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so he finishes up and Chloe's dad goes up to give his big sermon. His sermon, by the way, is live, laugh, love. It's it, He puts more words to it than that, but that's the sermon. It is, I can only imagine the result of someone going, I could do a sermon. <laughs> <laughs> everyone in this crowd, by the way, can we talk about the crowd? Because everyone in the crowd looks like they're sculpted out of mashed potato. Yes. I, don't, I feel like sculpted is generous. <laughs> <laughs> At one point, the camera guy looks for a good face to zoom in on in this crowd. And you, multiple times, he's like, nope. <laughs> oh, he almost turns it back around on himself at a certain point. Yeah. Okay. Oh, she looks, nope. Goiter. Goiter. So, okay. What about her? Wow. No, that's the, still the goiter. It's the same goiter. Shit. <laughs> There's also. There are multiple seats away. A fucking phenomenal moment where he's. He's trying to do a dramatic pause, this pastor character, and he goes, I challenge you. And I was so hoping it would just be like, do a fight. <laughs> so, yeah, so he's delivering this long, stupid speech about the nature of love and all the different words for love in Greek or whatever. He's like, love is like being honest about what kind of fantasy creature you are. At one point, he flubs a line and just starts over like, like we do, only yep. Morgan edits it out. Seriously. Yep. In Greek, they call... Oh, sorry, stupid. Uh, in Greek, they call... <laughs> <laughs> and then, and then, and I couldn't fucking believe this. I felt like a goddamn crazy person. We watch 
everyone, and I do mean everyone, slowly file out of the church. Like they were trying to show off how many people they scrounged up for this crowd shot. Like literally, again, over a minute of this movie is devoted to us watching people leave this church service. Watching people zipper as they make their way yes. out of fucking church. Watching everybody stand up at the end of the flight and then not yes. move for a long time. And they congratulate each other for having sat at this service as they're yep. going out. Mm-hmm. Is that something people do at church? I, <laughs> when the sermon's that bad. Good job. Maybe. You made it through that 90 second sing <laughs> yeah. thing. Fuck. Oh, okay. <laughs> to be fair, if you're a Jehovah's Witness, you should probably end church with like, hey, still a Jehovah's Witness. Wow. Good job, man. No, fair. <laughs> fair. So, okay. So th- we cut to outside the church. Everybody's leaving. This is where Chloe introduces Aurelius to her dad, Melvin. Yeah, and Melvin does not make fun of Aurelius' name because when you're named Melvin, you don't give other no. people shit for your uh-uh. name. And by the way, if you're thinking to yourself, wait, wasn't her roommate named Mel? Isn't that going to be confusing? Yeah. Who, yeah. Who gives a shit? I needed one person. This dad would have been perfect to be like, you're a vampire. The moment somebody's like, hi, this is <laughs> this is Aurelius. Me, my, you're a vampire. You're a vampire. You are vamp vampire. Very clearly. <laughs> You have a book bag. It says five gallons of blood. There's a red cross on it. Right, yeah. <laughs> Why do you label the outside of that? It makes no sense. <laughs> so yeah. So the, so they start to walk away, and then all the kids run up to Chloe, and she's like, "They're like, you're leading us in youth group tonight." She's like, "I sure am. That's the kind of character I'm playing." And they're like, "It sure is." And then they run off. Okay, but it's actually I would I would argue that it is crazier than that terribleness because they go, what are we doing in youth group? And she goes, it's a secret. And then they never revisit it. This never <laughs> comes back. Fair. All right. Well, I'll tell you what. I'm pretty sure this movie is pretty sure that it's got a full blown plot now, and I don't have the heart to tell it otherwise. So we're gonna pause long enough for me to bite my tongue. But we're back in a flash with even more of the last vampire on earth how it's not though no it isn't <laughs> it's not it's clearly he, not he turns her into it the second so to le- possibly <laughs> the how could it be the- they're they're <laughs> basically immortal how are all the rest of them dead but what how would he have survived it doesn't burned at the stake by pastors a vampire on earth i feel like he's just a vampire and none of the other vampires like him and he thinks he's the only. oh okay all right all right that makes sense you know that guy hangs out in high school like he just goes to high school okay we need to just like put him in i don't know like youngstown ohio and then all of us just never show up near him yeah we'll all live cool places he'll live in the midwest yeah and that that's actually where this shot is youngstown oh Oh, nice (laughs) amazing Okay, you ready? Wait, 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 wait. Just real quick before we do this. You're sure there's no other there's way? There's no other way, yes. For the last time, yes. Hey, we have okay. to Guys, do guys, what's going on with this giant cage and this smaller cage within that cage that's full of weasels? Weasels. Oh, yeah. Hey, Noah. Well, you know, with back to school and everything getting so busy, I- I've been finding it harder and harder to find time to exercise lately. So Heath has me fighting six weasels for 10 minutes once a day. You're going to... Mm-hmm. Fight weasels? Six weasels for 10 minutes once a day. No, take it seriously. It's interval stuff. Yeah, apparently it uses every muscle in the body. Every muscle in the body. Exactly. Confusion. Look, Eli, if you're looking to get in shape on your schedule, why not just try FitBod? What's FitBod? FitBod's smart workout app scientifically tailors an exercise program to your goals, equipment, and schedule so you can keep your full calendar and your summer games. It's true. I use FitBod to work out when I'm traveling or at the gym. The ability to tailor the equipment I have and the muscles I'm working on makes it my go-to workout app. But that's got to be super expensive, right? Well, actually, for less than the cost of one session with a personal trainer, you can get a full year of personalized workouts with FitBot. Plus, FitBot works on your iOS and Android devices. The app is super easy to use with video tutorials and makes learning new exercises a breeze. All right, guys, I'm sold. Where do I sign up? Keep your workout momentum going. Get personalized workouts from FitBod that get tougher as you go. Get 25% off your subscription or try the app for free when you sign up now at fitbod.me slash gam. That's 25% off of your subscription or try it free at fitbod.me slash gam. All right. I guess we won't be needing these weasels after all. Um, no, I still want to fight the weasels. Why? They know what they did. Okay. How will you make it stop at 10 minutes? Aurelius, how old are you really? 
over 2,000 years old. But in all that time, nobody has made me feel like this, Chloe. Right, about that, um, you know I'm 15, right? Yes, but your soul calls to me, Chloe, like no other soul has. Mm, sure, so you're a pedophile. What? No, no, I'm a, I'm a teenager too. No, no, you are definitely not a teenager. You're 2,000. You just look like a teenager. You're a millennia's old man and you're in love with a child. That very clearly makes you a, a pedophile. I mean, technically, I'm a hebophile because you are a teenager. See, only pedophiles know the difference between those two things, man. All right, you know what, Chloe? I was wrong about you. I must return to my lair where I will brood in solitude. I feel like the FBI should check your lair for child porn. Don't. There it is. <laughs> and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with Chloe describing that last scene to her roommate. This is the where we get the first shot of their absolutely insane dorm room. Yes. They are cubbies that appear to be filled with side-by-side -side bunk beds, right? Which is either insane dorm room design or a desperate solution to a vicious who gets the top bunk fight. Oh, no. It's two lofted beds. They get yeah, there's so much side more room side. for activities. Yeah. No, no. It makes both. That's actually real. Like, I've... <laughs> we that's standard for like the tiny little college room for two people. Yeah. Because you get more floor space. Oh. Right, right. No, I, I was just saying, say, it's not like they built this dorm for this movie or anything. So, yeah, that's clearly. It did. I did feel a little bit like I was in Matt Powell's mom's house. <laughs> right. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> so, yeah, so they hang out for a second. There's no point to this scene whatsoever, by the way. Just, you know, just like, how was church? Ah, you know, my dad talked about living, laughing and loving. And she's like, oh cool what's the next scene about she's like oh they invited my vampire boyfriend for dinner and we're like oh okay yeah but that's nothing that's not like that's, it's not like a mrs doubtfire ruse has to happen no <laughs> <laughs> you're fine yeah so now we go to the house for the big meet the parents dinner the food in this scene is so amazingly <laughs> caucasian it's the fucking worst look at, it's fried chicken right yeah i did well, not know right away that it was fried chicken <laughs> i saw mom was it fried i thought it was baked yeah i don't I, I don't even think it was fried i think that's correct if something was baked and you see mom scrape and like use weird tools from dad's basement to extract <laughs> this thing from a thing drills it free of the oven rack <laughs> yeah and yeah just like a reverse vice th situation and pops it up and she's like here have this clump of food yes. <laughs> and it lands on the plate and it makes Black. a metallic clanky sound it's crazy it's what i imagine noah sees every time i try to get him to eat at a vegan place <laughs> mama's food by the clump yeah that's oh god it's so gross so he shows up and he's got flowers right he brought flowers for chloe and he even brought more flowers for mom he gives flowers to mom and mom's like i can't eat these what the fuck is this <laughs> <laughs> you can't if you try so okay and then they sit down for the food of course, of course they have to say grace first Right. Mm -hmm. Are we going to talk about Chad? Are we going to talk about Chad? <laughs> it, Wait, wait. Who's, who's Chad? Chad, Chad is, is the younger brother. Younger brother character. <laughs> and he is... No, I'm obviously kidding. He's my fucking favorite. He's the best. So there's nothing I love more than a fat child. And that means there's nobody I love more than Chad. <laughs> so, yeah, no, he's he will show up a, a couple of times in the scene and I'll love him more every single time. But we start off the dinner scene here with a repeat of the what's your major hematology scene from before. Yeah. <laughs> it's so good. And again, I just have to point out that while this is happening, just as we describe this scene, keep in mind that in the foreground, Chad is just fucking housing this chicken <laughs> stick or whatever yes, it is. Like yes. wood chipper. Like <laughs> a <wham. laughs> so oh. Two bites. Ah, ah. <laughs> like a dog with something they're not supposed to have. <laughs> and then we get easily the most batshit exchange in the entire movie. He's like, well, you know, I want to cure blood diseases like diarrhea or whatever the fuck he thinks that is. And the dad says, oh, well, you see, we're Jehovah's Witnesses. So blood transfusions are the devil. And if we did that, we'd be shunned by the church. And Aurelius is like, 
That's fucking weird. Why are we talking about it now? <laughs> <laughs> well, we should just explain that blood is sacred and you can't transfer your blood to another's because that's a loss of the soul. Anyway. I'm a vampire and I say this from my heart. What? <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, he's like, you know, if we accepted a blood transfusion, we would be shunned by our church. And he's like, wow, you participate in that as well. He's like, we sure do. He's like, wow, that's a lot like murder, isn't it? He's like, yeah, sure the fuck is. Really? Yep. No, they had to write special laws just for us so that it wasn't God, murder. Jesus. Because of how much murder it is. Yeah. I love that this was the best conflict they could come up with. Here. It's <laughs> right. so, like. It's they they had to have in their head. They were like, "We got to miss this death, fire the situation somehow," and we we have nothing. What did you study? Hematology, <laughs> and then Dad being like, "Ooh, that's blood is magical poison." Oh so man, we found <laughs> you it. just had to say hematology. This is like <laughs> when the last boyfriend studied birthdays and Halloween. <laughs> So, yeah, so, and then, of course, mom's like, wow, you don't seem to be eating much solid food. And he's like, oh, you know, I'm still full from lunch. Oh, my God. This is the best. She's like, hey, Aurelius, your name's Aurelius. Just want to repeat that one more time. You didn't eat your um, fucking clump. Do you want <laughs> salt or pepper to add to Those are the only spices that there are that, after all. That'll fix that right up. Seriously, if you shake salt and pepper onto it, now it's just like, pfft. Sneeze, salt and pepper in your face. It's not getting onto sticking to any food. No. But the best thing happens here. Yes. The best thing happens. She's in the middle of being like, do you want salt or pepper? Chad somehow dives into the shot. And is like, I'll eat the clump. Grabs it. Yeah. Well, literally, the mom is like, Chad. And he's like, fuck off, Debbie. I said dibs. Hum, 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 hum. Is anybody eating this decorative pumpkin? Wow. <laughs> too, sm too slow. And the, the movie tries to do like a aha ah, ha moment about it, but you can't do an aha ah, ha moment while fucking Chad is eating a fucking <laughs> fry. While Chad is stealing the movie. Chad does everything I want somebody to do Chad, in this movie every Chad time is, he's in the scene. Chad is squatting on the kitchen table in a horse stance. <laughs> Eating his chicken like a baby gazelle. That's just Hard eye contact, <laughs> shitting at the same time. He's shitting it straight out. So, <laughs> Jesus Christ. And just as we're going like, oh, God, that food looks so disgusting. We watch Ori. He's driving away and he has to stop and puke the little bit of chicken he ate out. And I'm like, I get it. I get it, man. Yeah, mm -hmm. gross. But I feel like vampires can eat chicken, right? Isn't that the lore that they do eat animals sometimes to get blood? Oh, do they? They just don't yeah. like it quite as much as human? I don't Unclear. I, I think they could just drink the blood. I don't... I, Read a book is I, what yeah, I'm saying. I don't know a whole hell of a lot about vampires, I'll, I'll, I'll admit. So he gets home, and his blood mobile guy's there. He's got the delivery. Yeah. I really wanted him to slit open a bag and rub some blood on his gums. <laughs> <laughs> good shit. Yeah, they forget to do that. But we do get him looking in the back of this guy's trunk and being like, yeah, that looks like the good blood. Go ahead and bring it in. It's amazing. So he's got these little like he's got these little coolers like you take to the beach, the three dollar coolers or whatever. And they've got a little <laughs> first aid symbol on them. Right. They've got the Red Cross, you know, because that's what you, why would you not put that there? That's what you put your blood in. Cooler, three dollar coolers you get from the grocery store because your family's not ready to spring for a reusable one. Get a Coleman, man. Fuck. I just, I love the idea that someone involved in this production is like, look, I put a little red plus on it. And they're like, oh, that's perfect. Yeah, so, that's where the blood is. So the guy's like, he's like, yeah, just carry it on into the house. The guy picks up the cooler and I'm like, okay, five gallons of blood. That's like 40 fucking pounds. The guy has not even acting like there's something in the cooler, right? Like, no, he picks on. it up, he flips it, catches it yeah. again. He's like, all right, there you go. <laughs> I wrote my notes, come on, y'all. You know what a gallon of milk looks like. <laughs> right, yes. yes. He brings in a second box later to like sort oh, of make okay. it Oh, okay, so sense. there's only really oh, 20 yeah. pounds that was, of piece yeah, yeah, that he was, that was fine. juggling. Totally reasonable amount of styrofoam <laughs> blood containing <laughs> situation. Yep. And so the guy is like, he says, let me go get you the rest of the money. And so the blood guy is like looking around his house and apparently he's seeing creepy shit. I don't know what he's seeing because this movie does not know how photons work. Yeah, no. Right. We haven't mentioned the lighting to this point, but constantly characters are just completely in shadow. Whatever it is that they're trying to show you just doesn't even show up on the screen. Yeah. So we're looking around the like blazed out 
outline of whatever this house is. <laughs> right, yeah. But he shows back up with the with the money, and once the guy gets the money, I love to, he's like, so hey, what what are you doing with the blood now that I'm paid? <laughs> <laughs> that's when you ask. Yeah, right. Ask. No, that's fair. That's fair. And can I just say, he had a very prepared non-vampire answer. Good for him. Yeah, no, I'm doing leech experiments. Leech experiments. To check which, like, which blood is good for leeches. I guess. <laughs> L- like, ethnically? <laughs> yeah. At, at one point, he's like, yeah, let me know if you need anything else that I wanted. I was like, like, cum or feces? Yes. What else do you <laughs> Truck carries a lot of stuff, man. I'm just saying. Also, by the way, during this exchange, the air conditioner in that house kicks in and we hear that happen. <laughs> yeah, so it's been really boom. <laughs> All right. So so then we cut to. Cl- oh, God, I love this scene so much. We cut to Chloe in the park. She's just reading and being pretty. OK, no. Can we do the line reading of the following two lines? Because they're so crazy. I, we just have to read them. OK, OK. You be Aurelius. I'll be Chloe. Yep. I'll be Aurelius. These are li- word for word the lines in this movie. Yes. Hey, what are you reading? I'm just doing some recreational reading. It's nice to read something what? that you're not being forced to read for <laughs> class. <laughs> Imagine the number of drugs you would have to be on to give that answer to that question. What you reading there? For fun. <laughs> With my arms. <laughs> what? <laughs> And she goes further. She's like, he's like, yeah, I think it's good to have an imagination. I too enjoy fantasy that you speak of. And then she just, she's like, sometimes I wish for fantasy. I wish for a world without suffering. And I just wrote in my notes, very different genre. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, no shit. She, yeah, she just launches into a random Miss America monologue <laughs> in the middle of this. Yeah. Again, apropos of the question, what you reading? Yeah, she never tells us what the fuck she's reading. Yeah. So, okay. And he's like, hey, do you want to go for a walk or something? She's like, I would love to go for a walk. Let me go inside and, and put up my book. And, and he's like, would you like to change out of those 14 inch heels that you're wearing. She's like, no, this would be great for a walk in the park. Mm-hmm. No, I like recreational walking, just like my recreational <laughs> reading. <laughs> Let's do this. So again, she's wearing these fucking fuck me pumps this entire scene. They're walking through a garden. Including she like she walks on top of the half garden wall playfully. They're walking on a dock, taking a hike. Yeah, and this actress is not comfortable. I don't know what like daytime four in the afternoon stripper was like, here, wear these. But this actress did not volunteer to wear <laughs> these high heels. She's just constantly looking to the camera for a cut. Also, music note to the background here, Owl City is trapped in a cartoon factory. <laughs> so an entire city of owls? Yeah. yeah of course. God. That's sad. You're so old, Heath. <laughs> so old. Oh, is that a uh, super topical new movie reference? Band. It's a band. And all the youths love it. There you Owl go. City. That's the name of a band. Owl City. Yes. He Are sings they really, really good? Soft. Like a, he sings like a little lad. <laughs> super awesome music. <laughs> Who doesn't want to wake you with his music. <laughs> cool. If there was a genre of music designed not to wake you while you were asleep, it's Owl City. <laughs> so. All right. So. But eventually that scene resolves to them on a dinner date where we're going to get some more exposition this is where we're going to learn that he's an orphan and doesn't really have a family and comes from greece yeah no he doesn't (laughs) you're lying i'm looking at you 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 come from hot topic stan you don't come from greece (laughs) my guy if you come from any kind of greece it's the kind that is trapped at the bottom of a kitchen (laughs) Yeah, so, but then he's like, oh, hey, I found some notes about Dracula online that we could use for class if you'd like to come by my house later. And she says, ooh, come by your house. She's like, no, literally, I will give you notes and then I will drive you away from there. And he goes, she goes, really? That's okay. Right. I know that All sounds right. crazy. I printed them out online. That's an actual sentence he says. I printed yes. them out <laughs> online. <laughs> now you have to come to a physical location that's different from this one to get the physical paper that I printed out from the internet. Even though I knew I was coming to see you when I left my home. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. If you could scan them and email them back to me, I would appreciate <laughs> it. This is a 2011 movie, just to be clear. Yeah. Go to a UPS store and use the fax machine. <laughs> 
I'm going to give you my number. Don't do it when someone's on the phone or it'll just be a big loud noise. So, Do you have a Palm V? <laughs> so, okay, so we cut to his house so she can get the notes. And they walk in and she's like, hey, can I use your bathroom? And he's like, yeah, just walk into whatever room you want in my house. I'm sure it'll be fine. Let me go to the basement to get those notes. So good. I'm going to go to my fuck dungeon. I mean, basement. Normal <laughs> amount of fucking basement. <laughs> right. So she, she goes to the bathroom. And she sees literally a box of blood. She, she's like, oh, what's this box of blood? You know what? This is none of my business. Okay. <laughs> and walks right back. Which, which means he eats blood on the toilet. Yeah. Like gross. Just ripping into a pint of blood like a marathon runner while you shit. <laughs> I get I get thirsty. Not for blood, but I'm just saying like, I, you know, you can get thirsty in that moment. You keep it in the cabinet. You, you close the styrofoam <laughs> container. It's fine. Also, does he have a hand dryer in his apartment? Oh, he did he? <laughs> she, I swear to God, I saw her use a hand dryer and I was like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> yeah, this is very clearly like a dorm bathroom. That's A, gross, but like who installs one in their apartment? <laughs> so yeah, also like she's in the bathroom. He's like, Chloe, I'm like, you can't <laughs> call someone when they're in the fucking bathroom, dude. Shut the Chloe, fuck she up. She just opens the door. <laughs> yeah, what up? She's in the middle of a shit. <laughs> Chloe. Chloe, are you done? Chloe. <laughs> Chloe. <laughs> I miss you. <laughs> Everything okay there? I miss you too, babe. <laughs> so I'm going to push my hand through the door so we can all hit. Blumpkin. Blumpkin. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so she comes out and he's like, here, I gave you notes. And she's like, oh, these are just theories on vampires. He's like, yeah. What are the odds of that? And she's like, one. Because you gave them to me. He's like, right, whatever. And you said that before. And she says, these look interesting. She hasn't, she has no time to like read them. So she's just like, <laughs> I like the, I like the rectangle paper you use to print these <laughs> it's from the internet. White with all these uh, words on it. So <laughs> many. What'd you do? Normal margins? Looks like normal margins. <laughs> nice. What are times when I look at printouts from the internet and I think, mm, not for me, but these ones? <laughs> <laughs> Spicy. What's this, hammer mill? So, <laughs> can, can I go? <laughs> can I go finish my shot? <laughs> can I go finish my shot? <laughs> no, I'll try. I'll take these with me. <laughs> oh, babe, did you do one of the half ones where you pinched it off? You still got some? I had to pinch one off. <laughs> This is this is the this is the humor that really does it for you. She's in pants around her ankles this whole time. She's just waddling back. <laughs> Babe, I can't walk very well. You know when you can't walk very well because <laughs> you didn't finish. So, I wipe the fucking front to back like a human being. <laughs> so okay, so so we cut to her reading up on vampires that night on her laptop. We, she and then as she's doing it, she starts flashing back. She's like, "Hey, wait a minute! It's like he's hinting about something." And she flashes back to a bunch of scenes from earlier in the movie. Of course, we're used to that as Christian movie veterans. But she flashes back to like one line from every single scene in order. <laughs> Yeah. Also, they didn't have the doodly do effect, so they went with a raindrop on the screen effect. Yes. Yes. <laughs> oh, it was fucking hilarious. So yeah. So she puts it all together. The next day, she, we see Ari leaving the building, and she comes up. And she's like, "I have to talk to you. I'm in a snit." <laughs> he goes, "Oh, yeah. Okay." He's like, "We all have normal sunglasses to fit us. Cool. Let's talk <laughs> over here." <laughs> Everybody looks like Audrey Hepburn, the vampire. All of a sudden. <laughs> Yeah. It's insane. So they, they take exactly two steps to the right. Like they're still shoulder yes. to shoulder with the people he was talking to and begin their private conversation. Yeah. They be begin the, so are you a vampire or what conversation? <laughs> yeah. And she says in this order with no emphasis, you have pale skin 
and coolers of blood in your house. <laughs> As though those were equal evidence yes. for vampirism. I feel like you lead with the coolers of blood. Sorry, I, if I'm way off base here, I, I feel real bad. You correct me if I'm wrong. Are you fucking clearly a vampire? You're a vampire? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he's like, yeah. I'm a vampire. Obviously, I'm a fucking vampire. Just look at me. I'm a fucking vampire. So, and she's like, why would you tell me? And again, I have to give you the actual fucking quote because of how insane it is. She says, why me? I'm just a girl going on about her life, trying to make the world a better place. This is insane. To which he says, stop, look at me. I want you to know because you are just a girl trying to make the world a better place. <laughs> this dialogue is so tortured. Dick Cheney wouldn't sanction it. My God. Yeah. It's a, it's an hour and a half of that. Yeah. At one point she says, I don't judge you because you're a vampire. It makes me admire you more. <laughs> now you're even hotter. Really? Also, can we talk about him saying the word me? Because it's, the word he has to not he says he says it like meh every time <laughs> like you invited meh into your house and you had me over for meh for chicken and what meh <laughs> it was so rough and he said it at the at, like three or four times in every sentence for a good minute here he says the word me like novocaine's just kicking in every time he starts the word <laughs> And this is also, so this conversation is where we learn that he's 2,048 years old. Yeah. He's been keeping track. And he saw Jesus a couple of times. Uh, he was all right. <laughs> he's a power of two. I feel like that's a lie. <laughs> so she's like, yeah, did you, did you see Jesus? He's like, yeah, I heard him speak a couple of times. He was a great man. I'm like, what are the fucking odds? <laughs> 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 Seriously, he says that. He's like, yeah, I saw I saw Jesus a couple of times at like a small venue. I yeah. did. <laughs> before he sold out. This is before the tours and the whole <laughs> Jesus and thing. Meh, we were really good friends. It's really meh. cool. It's it's no. so funny. Like I remember talking to him after a show once and he was so down to earth. So cool. <laughs> so, <laughs> and then okay. Then we cut to her having an AIDS attack. Mm -hmm. Right? So she's in the bathroom puking, and then we see her at the ER. And the doctor's like, yeah, it looks like that cocktail of AIDS drugs we gave you is not going to work out. We're going to have to try a different cocktail of AIDS drugs. Yeah, this is the point I wrote in my notes. If vampirism turns out to be the cure for AIDS, I'm ending the podcast because we've peaked. So, you know, spoiler alert, 367 <laughs> episodes. We yeah, did it, everybody. Yeah, I might yeah. have to stop here. <laughs> so I got excited at this moment because I was like, okay, so... Vampire is the cure for AIDS or AIDS is the cure for vampires. Yes. <laughs> Either way, this movie's doing one of those fucking things. I'm sure of it. Because one possible outcome of this movie was for him to drink her blood and be like, oh, no, now I'm just a boy again. <laughs> You've cured me. And that's why you don't do blood transfusions. <laughs> J-dubs. Do -do 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 -do. Wow. So, yeah, the doctor leaves. She prays for a miraculous undead hematologist. Mm -hmm. And then we cut to, like, her and Ori hanging out with her roommate sometime later. And they're like, hey, where were you the other day? And she's like, it wasn't AIDS. That's what it wasn't. I was sick, which was unplanned, <laughs> like sickness is. My normally sufficient immune system, it didn't work this one time, but it's yeah. normally very sufficient, the, the system of immunity that I have. Yeah. So the roommate gets up and she's like, you know what? I got to go. I don't even know why the fuck I would be in this scene. And they're all like, right? And she leaves. And then he's like, hey, it, was it really not AIDS? And she's like, yeah, totally not AIDS. It's a different thing, different thing that I have. Yeah, he says to her, I can't get sick so I could take care of you. And I wanted her to be like, I actually think this might be one of the ones you can get. Because it's like, <laughs> right, right up your alley. Like, you know what I'm saying? Right in your wheelhouse <laughs> chicken pox you vomited from a chicken i feel like yeah. you're susceptible to yeah. stuff sick so okay so that night they're laying on the ground looking up into the stars he's telling her stories about the different constellations <laughs> he actually says that constellation right there it's actually uh upside down in the sky which is what the fuck is up? Like <laughs> you're laying. We, we, oh no no! You oh, know, fuck, we just you around. We just around. <laughs> now it's fine. No, it's fine. No, it's good. We fixed it. We fixed it. 
Or we could wait. No, no, we don't. Now have to the wait. Earth is upside down. Fuck. Which, uh, what? Wait. Yeah, he says at one point he says, "I know all the constellations." I was like, "Oh, that's what you were doing for two thousand years." Right? <laughs> and by the way, we're, we're I I can't emphasize enough that the soundtrack at this point is a guy with a Casio trying to fuck with me while I'm on shrooms. Yeah. Right. It is the weirdest, <laughs> crazy bullshit you can imagine. I feel like the guy who got in trouble for doing the sitcom new scene thing was kind of like in a snit and like a couple different times. <laughs> he, was, he just held one organ note for yeah. a long ass time. <laughs> All right. And it didn't make any sense. And he was like, fuck you. Look at me. Gotcha. <laughs> fuck you. Don't make one more peep. <laughs> so good. So, yeah, and so he tells her about constellations and then she delivers this gem of a fucking line. She says, and I quote, wow, you've been alive for the discovering of every major event in humankind. What? <laughs> Did she like you how young is the earth creationism in fucking Jehovah's Witnesses? Is it 2000 years about maybe no <laughs> how long have they been speaking english in Jehovah's right, Witnesses? Yeah. yikes right and he's like yeah you know the dark ages aren't as awesome as you would think though i mean there was knights but there were no dragons and she's like still yeah. though still <laughs> yeah she says there was nothing you could do and i'm like well we don't know that he might have you know vampire superpowers well, we, we, he has super speed we're gonna see that later yeah uh -huh. he has super fun facts too which is fun <laughs> no right right because yeah. of the 2000 been alive for like 2000 years so i know like <laughs> like three or four constellations that a I can lot talk of about right now really quite a few why is a vampire going to college right now for hematology he wants to learn hematology <laughs> yeah he wants to cure aids <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's it's 2011. You're kind of a dick. If you were like big into right, AIDS yeah, and you spent like you the 80s and us. 90s not doing shit. And we know that he did. He sat there around in the 80s and he was like, sorry, I'm just like really into disco right now. I'll get to that in like 40 years. <laughs> it's a machine that does the drumming for you. God. <laughs> Chloe, are you done shitting? Oh, God, it's just banal teenager crush conversation in the movie. Well, I'll tell you what, if I have to listen to any more of this dialogue, I'm going to slit my wrists and crawl in them like a tauntaun. So we're going to give ourselves a quick break before that happens. But first, let me give you the hard sell. Will Chloe and Aurelius's love endure numero forever? Were the eyes in this movie's script dotted with little hearts? Do the subtitles have emojis? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the blathering conclusion of... The last vampire on Earth. Hi, I'm Eli Bosnick. I'm Heath Henry. And I'm No Illusions, reminding you that if you enjoy our shows, you can, in fact, give us money for them so we won't die. That's right, Noah. Not dying is one of the four important pillars that keeps our podcasts here at Puzzle and a Thunderstorm LLC afloat. And there's no better way to keep us from dying than money over at patreon.com forward slash godawful. But you won't just keep us from dying. You'll also get cool bonuses like 73 and counting bonus secular episodes on terrible movies like Batman versus Superman, the Snyder Cut of Justice League, and some other movies that Zack Snyder did not direct. Yeah, we needed 73. Even higher level patrons get a Christian movie bingo card delivered right to their door designed by the one and only Angelo Madrid. That's right. So if you enjoy our podcasts and our aliveness, consider pledging as little as a dollar a show today. Patreon.com slash godawful. Because ghosts can't make a podcast. Ooh, or can they? No. That's, no, they, they can't. Spooktacular. It's August. Jesus, dude. Spooktacular. Oh, Aurelius, how amazing it must have been to see what you've seen. Not always, Chloe. I've seen a lot of the darkness of history, and it haunts me. Oh, Aurelius, you can't blame yourself. After all, there was nothing you could do. Oh, I mean, there there was stuff I could do. I'm a vampire. I have, like, super strength and super speed. Maybe some other powers, too. It's actually not super clear. But, yeah, definitely could have done stuff. But you just, you just didn't? That's right. And that was very hard for me. Because you were doing, like, vampire war stuff for the fate of the Earth? Nope. Nope. I was just mostly hanging around high schools, brooding. You know, drinking blood. Hey, Aurelius? Yes, Chloe? Are you the fucking worst? Oh, yeah. Big time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
And we're back for still more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action with the first read through in the lit class play. <laughs> so that's right. We're going to listen to this cast read more. Oh, my God. While they get heckled by their teachers spending the whole thing being like, come on, make it spicy. <laughs> spicy. <laughs> Don't make me bring my wife out here again. And he's reading like an erotic passage, right? This is like, this is the part that got Dracula banned for years where the girl like gets on her knees in front of him and slowly lowers to her neck. And this kid is like, she sunk to her knees next to me and her white cot. Oh my God. I'll show you with my wife. (laughs) Fuck. I want my fucking ringtone to just be (laughs) this guy trying to say the word ecstasy. It was just, well, it was ecstasy actually. (laughs) Ecstagony. (laughs) Stexton. Yeah, so yeah, so they read for a little bit and then the fucking professor is like, All right, let's skip ahead to the part where Ori bites Chloe. Let's practice the blocking on the neck biting. There's nothing <laughs> this uh, my dick is soft right now. <laughs> it's fucking nothing. There's nothing happening down there. I'm numb like I'm at the fucking dentist. So Noah, get the fuck out of here. Children bite each other in front of me. I'm an English teacher. <laughs> Until you hit plus 20 degrees, you all get a fucking F in English lit. <laughs> We're going to watch my penis. You're going to do the bite scene or you all fail. Oh, Jesus Christ. I'm in a negative fucking 90 right now. It's an any right now. It's an any. <laughs> Noah, you made it an any. All right. So then we, we, we wrap up that scene. He bites her very well. And now the two of them are on a porch somewhere, and he's asking if she's sure that she doesn't have A's, right? Yeah, the makeup in this scene, (laughs) they went for bags under the eyes, but ended up at Victorian Ghost. Yeah, I had a Halloween skeleton, but yeah. No, there's like Prada bags. It's it's aggressive. (laughs) She looks like she's going to a party as a meth-addicted raccoon. (laughs) (laughs) It's so over the top. I also like that they clearly... Put this guy who sucks. He's the worst. There's no way this actor is not universally hated by the entire crew. It's impossible. It's, it's impossible. physically impossible. Or really, he his real name might be Aurelius. I don't know. I didn't check. But he insists that people call him Aurelius for sure on the set. Everybody fucking hates him. And the crew was like, oh, we got a great spot for this scene. We're going to do it right at the corner of this really tall deck. You'll be sitting on like just the ledge, like the very <laughs> ledge. You'll you'll be fine. We'll we'll have somebody down there to make sure you you uh you get caught or whatever. Catch you if you if you fall. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I couldn't I couldn't watch this scene because the whole time I was just like, oh, he's starting to lose the balance. Oh no no, he's fine. <laughs> he's fine. All of Heath's notes are just like him chanting, fall fall <laughs> yeah. fall. <laughs> so that scene ends. We get her sometime later in her dorm room. She gets a call from her dad. Her dad says, hey, could you invite Aurelius over for dinner again? And she's like, sure. And then we watch her call him and invite him to dinner. And I'm like, wow, that scene exists because this writer could not think of something as simple as adding, oh, hey, by the way, my dad wanted to invite you over for dinner to that last useless <laughs> fucking scene on the porch. Also, they couldn't get him to fall. And the crew is like, let's what do right one more scene. Where <laughs> yes, he's in the same spot. Exact same spot. Yes. So timeline wise, it appears as though she walked off the porch and was like, hello, dad. What's that? Let me call him. Hello, really? Yes, you remember me. I was standing next to you 27 <laughs> seconds ago. Look behind you really quick. <laughs> so, yeah. So but he's down for dinner with the family. He, he says, sure. Yeah, that'll work. And then he calls his blood guy. He needs five more gallons of blood. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. So okay. Then we cut immediately to the dinner with the family again, and Dad's like, "So, Chloe, how are the eights? I, I'm sorry, we're not talking about that in front of your boyfriend. How are the schmades? Yeah. Luckily, Aurelius appears to be completely uninterested in what she's talking about, so he's like, "That was weird." So the weather, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so the weather's great for playing football. Would everybody like to? Play football after dinner? That's totally different than playing baseball with vampires. Completely different thing. Yeah, and Chad is like, can I eat it? Because if I can't, my mouth. I wanted Chad to look at him and be like, yes, I would like to toss a football. That sounds great. <laughs> so, yeah, so Aurelius goes to the bathroom to vomit out all the food that he just ate. Mm-hmm. Apparently, Chloe heard him vomiting, so she came into the bathroom to join him. Well, we know there are a couple that interrupt each other mid-shit. That's, so well, that's actually, yeah, now that we... 
Now that I get here in my notes, it makes perfect sense. Do you want me to hold your bangs while you puke? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, they're really heavy. Let me get help. <laughs> so, yeah, she's like, oh, I forgot that you were a vampire and probably can't eat human food. And just then Chad walks by because you know how this kid could probably sneak up on you. <laughs> okay, but that's the thing. They have, they're they trying to do what Chad is sneaking by them, except Chad is like me trying to climb the Roman steps. So he's like, <laughs> oh, God, I got to take a shit. Fuck, you guys are in here. I got a turtle head poking out. Are you guys almost done? What are you talking about? I'm not going to oh. be able to make it up the extra set of stairs. I need to use it. I need to use it. <laughs> so, hey, when you guys are done talking about whatever you're talking about, <laughs> You don't want to avoid this. This deuce I dropped in the hall. He just sits down on her lap and takes the shit through. Oh. <laughs> uh, he's, he's, he's eating a big cinnamon. Uh, yeah, we, we steered it towards poop jokes once again, folks. <laughs> <laughs> the key here though is that the little brother overhears the oh you're a vampire and can't eat food line that'll come back later it's very important seriously she's she's in the bathroom holding his bangs back while he vomits chicken because he's a vampire and clearly hears behind her i have to shit hurry up <laughs> and she's like Hey, since nobody's behind me, that's definitely not what's happening. You're a vampire. I just wanted to say it out loud. And he's like, mmm, interesting. No, but seriously, I got to shit. I'm going to tell on you after I shit. Is that from the airport? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then, okay. So, and of course, as you've probably noticed by now, this is Twilight, right? The yeah. whole fucking movie. So now they want to do the scene where the vampires play baseball, but but there's no superpowers in it. Yep. Right? So Ori just goes out and throws the bull pig skin around with Melvin and Chad for a minute. You literally watch them be like, okay, I throw the ball to you. You throw the ball to Chad. Chad throws the ball to me. I throw the ball to Chad. Chad throws the ball to you. That's all the Those combinations. Those are all the combinations. Yes. Yep, we are good. All <laughs> right. <laughs> Nailed the combinations. I'm going to take off. Seriously, they they decide, they clearly stole from Twilight, and then at some point they're like, "What's another great film for an homage cinematically?" The Room by Tommy yep. Wiseau, and they have the worst fucking football scene ever. Worse than that, they're trying to like throw the football, you know, four times, and they they're like, "Oh, so what? What do we stand like three to four feet apart?" Yes, and then right. throw footballs to each other. <laughs> Ow. At first, I didn't think these people knew how to throw a football because they're not putting a spiral on it at all. And then I see where they're at, and I'm like, well, yeah, because you couldn't put a spiral on it that close. You would hurt someone if you <laughs> did. So, yeah, so they throw the football around four fucking times, and then the scene is over, right? He's got to leave. Aurelius and, and Chloe have a nice romantic hug. And Chad's like, you can't stay forever. Get the fuck out. <laughs> <laughs> this is blocking my shit. I got to roll a cookie dough in the oven. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so, and my music note here, by the way, was so garage band that cars park on the dance floor when they play the clubs, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's also so discordant and random. The mood of the song and the mood of the movie are just bipolar at all fucking times. Yeah. All right. So... <laughs> this might be my favorite scene in the whole fucking movie. This is fucking insane. This is the most amazing thing. Aurelius goes home and he takes a bag of blood out and he's going to make himself a big glass of blood. <laughs> the blood's like Canadian milk. Yeah, it's yeah, exactly. Sad little bit. Right. I was hoping he would just do a Capri Sun style at this point. That's but what no. I was hoping. How, yeah. Obviously, that's the move. So stupid. But instead, he cuts this itty bitty little tiny hole in it <laughs> and we watch for like a minute and a half as he tries to fill this tiny this glass with this tiny little trickle of blood i timed it i timed it because it's so fucking long the blood filling starts at 52 minutes and 47 seconds and it ends at 53 minutes and 36 <laughs> seconds Jesus so Christ. almost exactly 50 seconds okay. for context podcast listener if we put 50 seconds of silence in this podcast to show you how eternal that is <laughs> 
<laughs> iTunes would literally bounce yep. the episode. Sure would. You're not allowed to have that much silence in your podcast. Seriously, Eli went crazy while watching this. His notes, his exact notes are, I feel like you should have uh, a bigger hole. This is taking a little while. <laughs> This is taking like a while. <laughs> this is taking a while. The glass is like a quarter full, dude. Cut a bigger hole. Jesus. Fuck. Cut a bigger hole. That is my notes exactly in order. At one point, I cu- I hit the back 30 seconds button just to see because I was going to do the timing thing before I realized Eli had. And it was still him pouring because this is more than 30 seconds long. It was so long that it stopped being funny and then looped back around to being funny a second time. Mm-hmm. Peter Griffin got kicked by an oompa loompa during the scene yep. it was long at one point he adjusts his hands to like try to make it go faster but it doesn't no nope. so he's just like nope, nope i guess cool. that's where yeah. we're at all right <sighs> the whole time of course i have to picture vampire eli and vampire heath arguing over the proper temperature to drink your blood right <laughs> i'm sure <laughs> obviously vampire heath would be saying 98.6 degrees fahrenheit and yeah vampire eli would be saying some other number like something wrong yeah yeah 203 <laughs> degrees yeah <laughs> I'm confused by selfies. So I've got a block of ice in between my teeth. Also, just a question. What glassware is appropriate for a glass of blood, in your opinion? Uh, Flintstones tumbler. Flint's, oh, like a sippy cup that, yeah, that yeah, pops yeah. back up? Ooh. Oh, there you go. That'll work. Yeah, because he, he went with highball glass, which I thought was an interesting choice. I thought that was inappropriate. <laughs> <laughs> he also didn't fill it. No. No. 50 seconds in, we get like three quarters of a cup of blood. And he's like, that's got to be enough. Yeah. <laughs> also, use a straw. I feel like it's a straw drink. Right. Definitely a straw drink. You're a vampire. You suck it. Yeah, that mm-hmm. makes more sense. And, and of course, he finishes up his his blood and, and the movie asks, so what would a vampire do with his spare time now? <laughs> Ping pong masturbation. Ping pong by myself. <laughs> Super speed ping pong. Right. Because they, they figured out how to do like play the tape back fast shit so we watch him playing ping pong against himself except like he's softballing himself on all these shots like what is the point <laughs> you have nearly infinite speed hit the ball hard also you're making a movie so you can do whatever the fuck you want <laughs> but he's hitting these shitty shots it's so boring and it goes on almost as long as the pouring scene does it's mm-hmm. so long but okay my favorite part he actually loses at the end to himself. Yes. I get that. Yes, you would lose yourself. But in the saddest fashion, he's just hitting these little soft shots. And the final thing before they fade out, they could have faded out before this. We watch him like <laughs> swing and miss at his own tiny little shot and be like, oh, yeah. And then it's done. <laughs> Wanted him to walk over to the board and like scratch out 22 and put up 23 as the new record. <laughs> and then be like, you have to win by two. No, you don't. Yes, you do. <laughs> Running back and forth. <laughs> and then, okay, and we cut to that night. Uh, Chloe notices that she's getting some scary looking AIDS bruises. Yeah, she calls her doctor. She's like, Doc, I'm bruising like Eli's sack up in here. What's up with that? <laughs> <laughs> Should I like be a vampire you think or yeah. <laughs> just oh, come, to the, come down to the office do oh, medicine okay. at the okay okay what what, yeah. did, what did you say <laughs> so yeah so the next scene is her at the doctor who tells her that she has AIDS cancer very sad and he's like he's like yes you have a this is a kind of cancer that comes with AIDS it's not life threatening but you know it is AIDS cancer like those are two sucky words so not <laughs> awesome it's not a great sign right yeah they're not going to turn into wings. There's God, there's so much unnecessary dialogue here about this. Like he goes on for so fucking long. She's like, you know, I've been really tired. He's like, have you been getting enough sleep? I'm like, that's why they pay him the big bucks right there, guys. <laughs> so. <laughs> and he also just moves straight past that. He's like, have you been getting enough sleep? Don't even answer that. Yeah. You need more rest. Uh, also, I feel like we should. Are we talking over an intercom? Because that's what it sounds. Can you even hear me? Because <laughs> it sounds like we're both in the New York City subway yelling at each other from different cars. Yeah. Also, she's at one point. He's like, yeah, you got to get more rest. And she's like, yeah, but, you know, my schoolwork and the doctor has this sort of like. I mean, don't take this the wrong way, but school is more of a long term goal. And I don't think you need. What? Those. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I'm done talking. I like that. It's nice that you're going to It's not really necessary. You know how people usually say, like, what do you want to be when you grow up? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to worry about it. 
one of the bonuses. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So then that night, Chad comes in to talk to his parents. He needs to tattle on Chloe for dating a vampire. <laughs> and I'll tell you what, for me to feel sorry for a kid delivering a line, it would have to be in a proof of life. <laughs> This poor goddamn kid, he didn't want to be here. He didn't know what he was signing up for. He's not good at this. And they give him like four and a half minutes of lead in to Aurelius is a vampire, right? Yeah. And in Chad's defense, he had a hot, fresh lasagna just absolutely getting ruined while he tried to shoot this <laughs> scene. So he's very distracted. <laughs> yeah, he goes, yeah, no, I overheard him the other night and, um, um, Aurelius said he was a vampire and the mom's like, don't be silly, honey. They're doing a play where he's a vampire. He's like, nope, nope, real vampire. She said, you're a real vampire. And dad says, no, no, no. Our daughter's boyfriend might be a vampire, honey. Let's look into it. Yes. Yeah. He's like, well, you know what? We should probably flash this out. I'm a J-dub. I believe all kind of dumb shit. <laughs> so this is not new. He actually, he, he goes, this is outrageous. <laughs> he walks out. Yes. Because he's got a plan. Here's his plan. He calls Chloe first. and He's like, hey, Chloe, don't go anywhere. <laughs> this isn't related to vampires. Just don't go anywhere. I'll tell you later why. Mm -hmm. And then he calls up a guy named Gary. And he's like, Hi, Gary, I got a vampire situation. Yes, Gary Van Helsing, apparently. He's yes. got a vampire guy. Gary, it happened again. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. No, his exact fucking words in the scene are he calls Gary. He's like, Gary, meet me at the church. I have a situation. Yeah. Like, what kind of situation, man? Just tell Amazing. him. Amazing. I know, Gary. You told me when you're spraying for ants, you should spray for vampires, too. And I didn't listen to you. I didn't listen to you. <laughs> <laughs> it's on me. So, OK. So so dad shows up at her dorm room. Right. And he and he goes for the direct approach. He's like, hey, is your boyfriend a vampire? And she's like. About that, he's like, yeah, that's actually that's the answer now. I just, that's a great question. I'm I'm so glad we live in a nation where people can ask those questions. <laughs> <laughs> he's a little too slow for me, though. She's like, Dad, what? What? <laughs> huh? <laughs> what? What did you say? What? Laser point. <laughs> and he's like, okay, that wasn't clear. Yes. I'm going to ask you again. Yes. Is he a vampire? Because it really does determine our next move a lot. <laughs> Whether he is or is not a literal vampire. I'm just going to throw this out there so you know where I'm at. I have called Gary. <laughs> right. Well, okay. And so let's be clear. She does not answer. He says, no answer is enough of an answer for me. And he storms out. That will be enough for him to now kidnap Aurelius and light his ass on fire. Right? Yes. So I just want to be clear about who dad is as a person. So she, because he's like, no, Chloe, look, if he's a vampire, we must murder him in the name of Jesus, our Lord. And she's like, oh, well, then he's not a vampire. He goes, yeah, I see. I don't believe you now. I already texted Gary. Do it. So. <laughs> hey, dad. Does the Bible say we have to kill vampires? Yep. I feel like it does. Sure does. I already started writing the ticket. We have to burn him. <laughs> so he leaves. Chloe calls. She's like, she leaves a voicemail for, for Ari about how her dad is, is apparently a vampire hunter now. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay. So she goes home and gets her gun. Okay. Now, I want to say, I did not, I wasn't paying attention or I missed, I missed that she had she gets her gun. So later on in the movie, when she produces a gun, I wept with laughter for eight minutes because I thought it came apropos of nothing. I rewatch. She does get her gun. But if you get a chance to watch this movie and not pay attention during these 10 seconds so that you don't know she has a gun until later, I highly recommend it. Come on, though. Like 19 year old white religious girl in the United States. She's got a gun. Her dad well, gave her a gun I mean, a year ago to, at, yeah. the, at the latest. Yeah. Well, and also it would be real easy not to pay attention to this scene because most of it is her walking around a dark yard with a shot that's too tight to see where she is and lighting that doesn't give up any hints of it either. Sure, that was mm -hmm. tricky. What you could see, though, her sun size boots of white yarn. Yeah. Just in what? How is that footwear? They look like Ugg boots fucked an Aaron sweater. <laughs> And a son of yarn. I don't know what any of that means. It 
Was that a boot in 2011? Maybe. I have no I mean, idea. I, who, who the hell even knows? I've blocked but, it from my mind. Yeah, like somehow like the 14-inch heels that she wore hiking were not her worst footwear in this movie. I like the 14-inch the heels. Not her, but people who wear a heel like that and can fucking kill it, that's impressive. When you see like the crazy good dancer in the crazy high heels, very impressive. That That it is, Heath. That it is. Um, anything else that you like it when women wear? <laughs> I like everything that Queen B does. Just, you know, big uh, Queen B. Yeah. Right. Or Bay. Okay. Do people say Bay or B when they say I think it's Queen B. Are right? you referring to the singer who I must Beyonce insist Knowles. we are? Yeah, I, we're not close enough with Beyonce to just be calling her nicknames. I'm in the beehive. <laughs> as a podcast. Are you? All right. Huge. Well, there you go. All right. So, Okay. So, yeah, so she checks around her house. The family's not there. She checks around the church. They're not there. She's like, oh, they must be at the vampire burning spot in the woods. Yup. The vampire fire pit. Because, like, A, it's not even evening yet, right? Like, it's still the middle of the day. He found this information out this afternoon and acted on it, right? They got a vampire burning posse together real quick. He texted Gary, and he was like, hey, get a lynch mob together real quick. Yeah. And Gary, like, 20 minutes later was like, all set. Where are we meeting you? At the vampire burning pit, apparently, because, again, she finds them. Yeah, they have a there's a vampire phone tree. That's the only <laughs> way that this makes sense. <laughs> yeah, and they meet at the spot, like, you know, the high school party in the woods, the spot where the keg goes. Right. right. For sure. And they have enough wood to, to put up a little pyre for him and everything, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, they just had that laying around. Also, he's a vampire with fucking super speed. And they just, like, caught him. Real easy. Yeah. Tied him up, ready to go. Right. Gary. A guy, your name can't be Gary and be a vampire hunter. You need to have a different, cooler name. <laughs> so, so yeah, so he, dad gives his vampire burning speech. He's been practicing. He's got one uh, at the ready, you know. They, they brought Chad along. Yeah. Well, fat Chad is there for the vampire bird. He's just like very, very tenderly hiding a bag of marshmallows behind his back. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying we can accomplish a couple things at once tonight. <laughs> <laughs> the speech before they, they're just like tonight, there's a guy giving a vampire speech that was ready. And he's like, yep, we're gathered here with our lynch mob that formed 20 minutes ago to burn a child at this stake. And everybody's like, yep, cool. And the point he's making is like, yeah, this guy's a vampire. But even more importantly, Technically, that involves blood transfusions, so <laughs> that's extra evil. Yeah. This guy feels the need to clarify why he personally is slaying this vampire. Right, right. There are a lot of reasons to kill vampires out there. They murder people to survive. They're creatures of Satan. But for me, this has a personal twist. <laughs> so Hit it, boys. Three, two, one. And then Chloe comes out of nowhere with her gun, waving the gun around. She goes, stop or I'll shoot. Right. And it, she has to give this whole like, you know, he's not a bad vampire. He's just misunderstood speech. Yeah. I have <laughs> AIDS and he's going to cure. A well, he's going to college to study the an unrelated. There's really no reason to believe he's got a better chance at it than the average hematologist. <laughs> he's a freshman. He's a hematology major. Is that really a major? Yeah, it's he's <laughs> thinking about it. Biology. He, there is one class. He hasn't taken it yet. He's had 2000 years to practice. Hey, have you cured any diseases? <laughs> he has not cured any. This will be a first for him, but I really believe in him. Yeah. <laughs> And also, <laughs> wait, wait, while she's doing this, she has her finger tucked behind the trigger of this gun very clearly, which leads me to believe that they used a real gun for this. No question they used a real gun. And she's just pointing it right at the fucking cameraman. <laughs> yeah, these these cuts are short for a reason. He's like, OK, good. That was great. That was great. Well, I didn't finish my speech. Oh, no, I felt you. You came to a, <laughs> All right. um, a, a pause. Bring in Alec Baldwin for his lines. Cool. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, there's also this great moment where somebody starts to move and she shoots him in the arm and she's like, I'm not playing around. He's like, I was scratching my ass, lady. Come and on. then it never gets addressed again. She's just like, bam. Anyways, I think his car goes... And again, never again, never comes back to it. No one mentions it. She just shoots a man and that is part of the movie. Yep. Yep. She says, now untie him. And they're like, well, I didn't know you were going to fucking shoot people. So they untie him. 
And the two of them escape together. There's an ominous thunderclap. It's it's incredibly sunny out, by the way, but there's an ominous thunderclap nonetheless. Chad's standing over the guy that got shot. So it'd be a waste of meat, right? If <laughs> that that, that arm's going to have to go anyway. You're your arm? <laughs> Am I going to finish my arm? Chad, she just got me in the shoulder. Right. You're not allowed to do blunt transfusions. <laughs> just give me your arm. <laughs> so... All right, so that we go back to his place, and she's like, are we safe here? He's like, yeah, don't worry, I have ADT, so, you know, and got a ring doorbell, so we're going to be good. And she's like, how did you get tied to a post? Don't you have superpowers? And he's like, yeah, well, you, your dad surprised me. But you have super speed, though, right? So once you were surprised, that didn't, well, you know what, let's what, just shut the fuck up about that right now. Got the Jehovah's Witness Protection Program. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so she lays down on his uh, on his lap, and he's like, "Come on, lie down. You need to rest." And she's like, "That's what I'm, what?" And then so he gets up and and lets her lay down on the couch. Oh, he goes at this point. He's like, "Why didn't you tell me before? Like in that porch scene that you had AIDS?" And she's like, "Well, I didn't want you to think less of me." Why? Why Which, would he do that, don't, Chloe? Because <laughs> he's the fucking worst, I guess. Yeah. Question: Um, where did she get the AIDS? That's a great question. Did they they address it in the movie? Clearly, she's not sexually active because this is a Christian movie. No, this is the most insane fucking story. She was doing missionary work in Africa. You know, those people are just, they're loaded with the AIDS. Yikes. Yikes. (laughs) Literally, when she she said the word Africa, I was like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is not going to get good. So she's in Africa and there's an attack because it's Africa, right? So there's an African attack while she's at this orphanage. And she's helping this bloody orphan, but she's bloody too. And the orphan blood gets in her blood. Like, you know, the end of the first Hulk movie. It was like that. That's yeah. like Hulk. So- <laughs> and his response, by the way, when she says that is he goes, go, you don't deserve this. Like, right. And she says, well, you know, most of the Africans with AIDS don't deserve it either. Most. Well, which ones did deserve it? <laughs> I was like, why don't you write me a list real quick, Chloe? I feel like Chloe has a handy list of the Africans she thinks deserve Name all AIDS. the countries that deserve the AIDS they have. <laughs> Africa. Okay, what's next? That's a country. Let's name some more. <laughs> and so the rest of this scene is going to be the should I turn you into a vampire scene from Twilight? Except... Unlike Twilight, where it was, do you want to be a vampire or a teenage girl? It's, do you want to be a vampire or do you want to painfully die of AIDS? <laughs> right, right. And well, and there's no conflict with her. She's like, hey, so dying of AIDS sucks. Could you turn me into a vampire and, and cure that? He's like, yes, I could. And she's like, great, will you? He's like, mm, I don't know. You sure? Uh, I don't think it's I mean, I get immortality is kind of a bummer. I mean, like, I just uh, <laughs> like, especially in retrospect, because like you pointed out, I didn't stop the Holocaust. I didn't do shit. I didn't learn any hematology. <laughs> AIDS was a big problem for a while before now. <laughs> so it's kind of like a lot of guilty stuff. And she's like, no, yep. Uh, cure my AIDS now, please. Regardless of what you just said. And then he just says no. Yes. And she goes to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> okay she also he's like mm, I don't know she's like oh by the way I should have added one more thing I'm cool with being a vampire forever immortality whatever as long as we're together forever the two of us in love for sure yes and then he, he might as well be like ooh not into uh, labels so. uh, <laughs> you're being hysterical I just thought we could have like a a school play, you know, like, oh, we're in the day and we fuck. And then it's like, oh, it's too bad. It doesn't work out. But if you live forever and I live forever. <laughs> so, thing, hmm. Have you read The Ethical Slut? <laughs> you really had a conversation. You a wristman? <laughs> All right. And then the next scene in the, she goes to sleep. He tucks her in. And the next scene is them at the fucking play. Keep in mind, her dad and the vampire hunters are still out together, but they're not going to ruin their fucking play over that, okay? <laughs> to be fair, based on the quality of this play, I guarantee you the vampire hunters were like, hey, we could just go get him at the play, and they were like, I don't want to I don't want to shit. That. We'd have to stay for the entire... Fuck it for it. <laughs> Can we sit near the door? No? Okay, then I'm not going. We'll find him later. We'll kill him later. Okay, what is the movie saying happened? Did mom and dad and the vampire hunter team just, like, drop it? 
the movie is has completely forgotten that they exist as people. Yeah. Were they like, oh, no, hematologist. Okay. <laughs> okay. I think we all learned something when she shot that guy, right? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, is my face red. So, yeah, and, and so they're all getting ready for the play in the back, and, like, one girl's like, we're super nervous, and then Noah delivers this amazing line where he basically says, well, it's okay, we can't fail because literally nobody cares about the outcome of this. We're literally just acting out our English teacher's sexual fantasy. You see him out there? <laughs> Guy's like a towel wreck. He's erect. We all get an A. He said 20 degrees, that's an A. We're fine. <laughs> that's how a lit class is measured in dick angle during a play. We're set. <laughs> Question, why are they all barefoot in the play? Oh, I didn't Great notice that. Great question. Yes, they're not wearing shoes. I think it is because they're on a little bit of a stage thing. I think they originally shot this scene and the wooden stage made too much creaking with their shoes. <laughs> so they all had to take <laughs> their shoes probably off. probably right, yeah. Or the yarn boots were just like crazy carpet socks shocking everybody. <laughs> all oh, right. Them. Right. Yeah. Right. A lot of possibilities here. Or that's just what this lit professor is into. He's an ankleman. But what ends up happening here is we end up watching like a worse and lower budget version of this movie contained within this movie. This, this yep. is actually pretty funny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she might as well come out and give like bad acting advice to the actors the way Hamlet gives advice to the actors in the play. <laughs> now. Move your arms around a whole bunch. So... <laughs> So, yeah, so they're getting ready for the big biting scene. And she's asking him, she's like, are you sure you're not going to turn me into a vampire? Because it really seems like you're going to turn me into a vampire. That seems like the whole plot of the fucking movie. If you don't want to turn me into a vampire, that's fine. I just want you to tell me why you don't want to turn you into a vampire. They're having the fight. And no, I don't know if you'll relate to this. They're having the fight where you're like, you kind of start to have a fight in the car. And you're like, hey, we got to go do this thing. Let's not talk about this. And then she's just like, hey, so just real quick, if you just not, want not the to time. do that not fucking the thing that I want to say. Actually, there's a microphone in front of both of us. And you're like, this is just the fight whispered. This is just a whispered <laughs> version of the fight. <laughs> so so they go out on stage and he's going to bite her in the thing. And she's like, he's like, are you sure you're ready to be a vampire on stage? Right. So I wrote my notes at this point. Guys, I think him biting her and turning her into a vampire on the stage is a metaphor for him biting her and turning her into a vampire in real life. <laughs> I think that's what this movie was going for. Because <laughs> vampires are kind of like vampires, you know? You think about it. And that's it. It's over. It ends on him biting her in the middle of the fucking play. So that's at least where they ran out of money. Yep. So our, I, I, I'm dying of curiosity on this one. Anybody have a theory as to what the moral of this story was? This no. is the ch never take Chad's chicken. <laughs> you come between Chad <laughs> and his chicken. Deserve AIDS. <laughs> yeah, some people don't deserve their AIDS. There is a list of people who deserve AIDS inside the mind of the author of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> That's a pretty important moral, ultimately. Mm -hmm. All right, well, I guess that's going to do it for our review of The Last Vampire on Earth, but that's not going to do it for the episode just yet because we still need to fall back into this well next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, to heal my broken heart for the lack of Heathleton as he sets off on his vacation, we'll be watching a sexist sack of shit that highly, highly has been requested. At long last, we'll be watching... The Princess Cut. Oh, good. Misogyny. So with that to look forward to, we're going to make episode 367 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon owners that help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per-episode donation at patreon.com slash godawful and thereby earn only access to an ad-free version of every episode. You can also help a ton by leaving a five-star review and by sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Alias, Citation Needed, D&D &D Minus, and The Skeptic Card, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of PA. Andrew Torres, Tim Robson handles our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slot and people drafts on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer Morgan Clark and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a check of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm No Illusions, promising to work hard to earn another check next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. Chloe got saved from AIDS by becoming a vampire and then died of cancer a month later. <laughs> the third act of that play went on to be ruined. <laughs> Jehovah's Witnesses would go on to be way less open-minded about their gay kids than they are about vampires yeah
I love HelloFresh so much that I'll come to your house and make it with you. I would... <laughs> Sorry. <clears throat> All right, here I go. I'm a professional. I can do this. Is this a real ad that we're no, doing for them? No. No. Okay, good. I checked. I it. checked as well, Heath. I, I, I rolled <laughs> over and checked. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2022. All rights reserved. There's a highway that stretches across the 93 days of summer where worship isn't offered to the sun, but to the smoking tire, the S-curve, and the spin turn. And if you ride it, make sure you do it in a Dodge Charger, Challenger, or Durango. Because on this highway, the lines being blurred are the ones between drivers and demons. Welcome to Highway 93. Dodge is a registered trademark.